large organizations and service providers would like to be able to deploy different stores in different IIS websites so that each store can have a different host name and certificate binding. Up until now, it has been possible to use only one base URL in Storefront. Click on each of the cards to find out what you will learn in this lesson. Using PowerShell storefront commandlets, it has previously been possible to create multiple storefront websites, that is, base URLs, but previously storefront has restricted an administrator into deploying storefront either into the default website or the SDK has required them to choose the site that will be used for the deployment. The underlying storefront architecture has always supported multiple IIS websites on a single server, but was restricted by the storefront SDK. Customers have worked around this by copying the web files between IIS website. New to Storefront 3.8 is the ability to support multiple host-based URLs, each tied to a specific site ID. Storefront commandlets that previously assumed a single IIS site have been changed to accept and respond to a specific site ID. Each site will have its own instance of the forward slash roaming folder, so that a single site can have its own service record with only its stores and gateways defined. Each site will share storefront services, that is, they will not be duplicated per site. To create multiple base URLs, open PowerShell, load the storefront commandlets and use the add STF deployment command to create each required site. Take a moment to look at the example on screen in which two base URLs have been created, and note that each is configured with its own site ID and base URL. The storefront console will be disabled when multiple sites are detected, and after opening the storefront console, the message shown will display to reflect this. Once more than one base URL has been created, storefront administrators will need to rely on storefront PowerShell commandlets to configure and manage their sites. The restriction is in place as there are changes required in the storefront console to fully support multiple sites. Additional features to remember in ZenApp and Zen Desktop 7.12. Click each button below to review the enhancements. ZenApp and Zen Desktop 7.12 introduces a new SSPR package, version 1.1. After upgrade from SSPR 1.0 to 1.1, all previous configuration and data is preserved. The release includes a number of security enhancements, and there's a new blacklist configuration feature. Users and groups added to the blacklist cannot use any of the self-service password reset features, including enrollment, account unlock, and password reset. Entries into the blacklist is done through the user configuration section of the SSPR console, as shown in the screenshot here. For further information on the requirements, configuration, and known issues, please refer to the SSPR 1.1 document in the Additional Resources pane. ZenApp and Zen Desktop 7.9 introduce Citrix Universal Print Driver support for stapling and paper source selection in XPS print format. In the ZenApp and Zen Desktop 7.12 release, support of these advanced features extends to EMF print format. EMF is the default print format for the Citrix Universal Print Driver. Though not a new feature in 7.12, improvements have been made to the Desktop OS VDA 7.12 component such that Auto Client Reconnect now operates correctly for Desktop OS VDA sessions through an Access Gateway or Netscaler Gateway. For complete technical coverage, please refer to the Workstation VDA ACR Improvements Concept Specification document in the Additional Resources pane. 7.12 adds an emulated 8-bit mode which can be set in the HDX policy preferred color depth for simple graphics. Setting the policy to 8-bit mode reduces the bandwidth by up to 50% for typical workloads as it provides an ultra-low bandwidth usage option intended for workloads that are not graphically demanding, for example MS Office, mobile apps and bespoke legacy apps with simple interfaces. Note that the 8-bit option is not supported when the HDX policy Use Video Codec for Compression is set to For the Entire Screen. Additional data points are now collected as part of the Call Home program. This means that now the data collected by Call Home has 100% parity with the data collected by Citrix Scout. 
For information on the specific data now collected by Call Home and ZenApp and Zen Desktop 712, please refer to the Call Home 712 Compare spreadsheet in the additional resources pane. The release of 712 also means a new provisioning services 712 release. There are two new features we'll cover in this lesson. The first is the ability to place a proxy between Zen Server and PVS, and the second new feature is provisioning support for Linux VDAs. Click on each of the cards to find out what you will learn in this lesson. Provisioning Services, or PVS, now provides functionality for a proxy between Zen Server and PVS. This proxy, referred to as VDIS caching, improves how Zen Server and PVS interact, which enhances the performance and resiliency for ZenApp and Zen Desktop deployments. So, what is VDIS caching? VDIS caching enables a PVS proxy to reside in DOM0, the Zen Server control domain on a Zen server host where streaming of a PVS disk is cached at the proxy before being forwarded to the target VM. Using this model, more local resources on the Zen server host are consumed, but by allowing server and desktop target devices to access data directly from the Zen server host's RAM cache instead of the PVS server's RAM cache, network traffic that would typically pass between PVS target devices and PVS servers can be significantly reduced. This benefit, combined with a reduction in the number of read requests that need to be processed by provisioning servers, enables customers to achieve greater VM density, faster boot times during boot storms, and overall improved device performance in ZenApp and Zen Desktop environments. With the proxy feature, PVS and Zen Server provide an improved functional paradigm by providing a unique value available when used together. PVS provides support for local, NAS, and SAN attached storage in Zen Server. Environments experience reduced network traffic and deployments experience improved fault tolerance with tolerance for outage instances of a PVS server. Importantly, the proxy feature is only supported on Zen Server with a proxy capability installed. UI changes only occur when you're using that type of hypervisor. To use this feature, an optional package must be installed on the Zen Server host. There is no additional dependencies on the installer. For more information on the relationship between Zen Server and PVS, Refer to the blog Zen Server and PVS Better Together. Click each page below to review the enhancements. Linux PVS Streaming extends the operating system support PVS Streaming to selected distributions of Linux server versions, namely Red Hat Enterprise Linux Server, CentOS and SUSE Linux Enterprise Server. These are the same Linux distributions which are supported by Citrix for VDA installation. Desktop versions, SLE Desktop and RHEL Desktop, will not be supported as these additions do not contain the required tools for manipulating the Active Directory password database. Zen Server and ESX hypervisors are supported. Provisioning Services, or PVS, now provides functionality for a proxy between Zen Server and PVS. This Linux streaming functionality works with the latest Provisioning Services 7.12 version in conjunction with corresponding versions of ZenApp Zen Desktop version 7.12. This feature also requires the latest technical preview version of Zen Server. For more information on the relationship between Zen Server and PVS, refer to the Citrix blog article, Zen Server and PVS Better Together. For further information on configuring both the new PVS proxy and Linux VDA streaming features, please use the Provisioning Services 7.12 document in the additional resources pane.